Hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Bravely Default. Last time, we entered Eternia and prevented a coup that was being led by the scumbags De Rosa, Profiteur, and Kata. Of course it was those three. But they got what they deserved, and they're locked up in the Eternian dungeons led by Alternus Dim. So, we don't have to worry about them. But why am I here at Vampire's Castle? Well, it's because the start of today, we're going to be tackling the sub-scenario found here. As, of course, De Rosso has something for us. Now, you may look and see that I am on a different job for Adia. Well, actually, I'm on a different job for almost everyone. Agnes is still on Red Mage, and Ring a Bell is still on Vampire, I guess. Um, but... Idia and Tiz are on uh, new jobs, and we're going to be performing a really, really interesting strategy today. But before I get into that, let's go ahead and check up on Narende Village. Accessory shop complete. The bonus equipment to the Melodist shirt has been available. This is Ringabel's costume. Again, I'll go over what the Melodist shirt represents and what it, uh, how it looks and whatnot in a little bit. Um, but... I just want to point out, every single village is done. Narende village is complete, it is fully rebuilt. It has been over 80 episodes that we've been working on this thing, and it's finally over. This was with 100 villagers. Imagine if you had less than that, or hell, even more than that. How much time you have to invest into this piece of content. And despite that, there is still quite a bit of content that is locked behind Narende Village that I want to go over at a later date that unfortunately you can't really access anymore. But that's why I'm not going to focus on it in this main playthrough, and instead I will give it its own time to shine later down the road. But it's so strange to be done with that. <laughs> it's a monumentous occasion. Anyway... Let's go ahead and take a look at our jobs. So, Idea is going to be on Dark Knight. She's running Sword Magic because I want her to have access to Drain, as we will be doing the Rage build that I've made for her uh, a few chapters back. However, if you are looking, you may realize that not just Idea, but every single one of my characters is now currently running the Red Mage support ability BP Recovery, which will raise your BP by 2 when sustaining a status ailment. Now, this is because I'm going to be utilizing a strategy with Anya specifically, where I use Group Cast All and Status Ailment Amp to basically spam poison on my entire team and then Asuna them to constantly gain BP. She's basically going to be a really, really accurate BP battery for everyone, where we're going to be constantly gaining 6 BP every single turn, which will allow us to use stuff like Rage and Monk's Pressure Point and Spirit Master's BP spells that mitigate ailments and whatnot, and uh, elements, uh, without much worry. This is kind of an alternative to a Haste and World Strat. The unfortunate thing is that it does require one of your characters to actively be the BP battery, rather than it just happening naturally. But that'll be the build I'll be running today, and it's a pretty interesting one. This is actually a strategy that I've seen be run more often recently, as I've been talking to people and watching playthroughs. And we're going to be trying stuff out here in the Vampire Castle. Another thing new here. Um, if you want to look at the paintings again, go right ahead. Let's read this party chat. Narende restored. The village. Narende. It's finally happened. The restoration effort is complete. Congratulations, Tiz. Makes all that hard work worthwhile, eh? Thank you all. Really. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. I'm actually getting a little misty. Little wonder. This has been Tiz's personal cause for so long. A long, slow effort to build up brick by brick what the Grey Chasm stole in an instant. You began the process alone from absolutely nothing. Truly impressive work. I wasn't alone. Not really. So many people came together to bring the Rende back. If not for them... I'd given up in those times when it all felt impossibly big. It is. I wasn't sure if people would even come to live here. Whether any of this actually meant something. All those times I nearly gave the village up for lost. Everything I could do felt tiny 
just like a tiny little step along an endless path. Not so endless now, is it? One step in front of the next. You've seen it through. I'm so... <laughs> just so proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you all so much. Yeah, there are party chats that have uh, been given to us occasionally as you progress through Narendi Village. We saw a few of them very early on in the playthrough, but I actually cut out most of them as I would get them at the worst possible time. And we're kind of just cut in the pacing of the episode, so um, I'll be showing them all in bulk later on. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh... There isn't really anything all too interesting. We already went to Vampire Castle fairly recently, so I don't even think I'm really going to be looking at the paintings. If you want to look at the paintings, trust me, there's at least two other episodes where you can go and see what, what everyone says. So, I'm going to be gunning it straight for Lord Dores Doroso, and I will see you at his throne. It only gets worse from here on in. How many times have we heard that statement? Quite a lot. Okay, so I'm here at De Rosso's throne, and, um, I mean, we fought him a few times already. I'm sure he doesn't have anything up his sleeve, right? I commend you for the yes, 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 the final painting about the angel. The yes, yes, yes. One might also say, but be forewarned, I... I think we can do battle. We'll be fine. Hmm. And who might you be? It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Archduke de Rosso. I am Victor S. Court of the Duchy's Council of Six. Ah, the child prodigy. I believe we've met once before, though you may not recall it. So, what brings the brilliant young scholar whose findings saw Eternia become a land of life everlasting here? Surely not the architecture. This castle was built in a fit of boredom, and looks every bit the part. Just what is it you want, Mr. Court? I... The life I have dedicated my own to saving will soon be snuffed out. I have tried the latest in medical technology, pioneered by my father in my own research. A forbidden art, concealed by the orthodoxy. I transmuted the waves emanating from the Earth Crystal into healing energy. And yet... And yet... I even exhumed the Vampire's Crypt, buried deep beneath the Head Temple. Did you now? More than feel disappointed, I had to laugh at the crass handiwork I found within. The remains were a motley mix of bones so jumbled I couldn't begin to say which beasts they were taken from. At the time, I dismissed the stories for a farce at the end of a senseless struggle for political power. But the paintings I saw while on the way up here have convinced me anew. Lord De Rosso, are you not privy to the secrets of true life everlasting? And if I were, what then, good doctor? I would humbly ask for a sample of that immortal body. Would you graft tissue grown from my flesh into her? Or perhaps create a new life altogether? I find you as frightening as you are pitiable. <clears throat> I am not unwilling to offer you a part of me to further your work. But I would first have you show me the true depths of your despair. Do battle alongside me. Cast your life into the crucible. Well, okay, this got just a little bit more interesting. So, Lord De Rosso is now partnered with Victor, who is aiming to use his immortality to, uh, using De Rosso's immortality to try and save Victoria. It's an honorable goal. So, pairing these two together, honestly, you're not really in much danger. The biggest problem is that Victor can add on to the extra damage that Lord De Rosso brings, which might allow for Bone Crush to kill your team. It's just an extra piece of damage they need to worry about. Um, but really, there's not anything too crazy. Also, because De Rosso is no longer alone in this encounter, he actually has less HP than he does normally, only having uh, about 99,000 HP instead of 150,000 on normal mode. 
So, honestly, you can probably just commit to dealing a lot more damage here and finishing off the fight quicker than you normally would. But for right now, we're going to be trying out our, our uh, little strategy here. We're going to be putting on Drain with Idia's weapon. And then for ring -a bell we're going to go ahead and just immediately cast Enigma to remove that holy uh, threat from this encounter. And that's going to put ring -a bell into the negative here. But we're actually going to fully brave with Agnes and use her to cast three poison spells, which you got to be careful when you're in here because you might accidentally cast it on the enemy and you don't want that. And then after we cast three poisons on our team, we're going to cast Asuna. Now, I have status ailment amp on on Agnes, which means that her chances of landing ailments is much higher, but that doesn't mean it won't uh, it won't miss. So I actually do have to play fairly careful here. And then Tiz, uh, why not? We'll just we'll just throw a pressure point out on uh, Lord of the Rosso. He's the bigger threat here. We're gonna slow things down a little bit here. Enigma, so now Holy won't do any damage to us. Okay, see, there's two extra BP. Okay, missed Agnes. That's okay. All right, cool. Look at that. Now we got a lot of extra BP. 8008, nice. Holy does not do anything to us now. So we have a lot of extra BP now, and we can kind of mess around a little bit. We're going to go ahead and just rage twice with Idea, uh, because that's what we want to do. And then Ring a Bell, we have a lot of BP to work with. So we're going to do something with this. We're going to go ahead and White Wind. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually have him curse De Rosso, and then, hmm, uh, we'll have him curse Victor as well, why not? We're gonna have Agnes go ahead and set up another round of three poisons, and an Asuna. This, this setup is a bit long-winded, of course, but that's okay. And then Tiz, we're just gonna set him to do a few pressure points. We'll have him just do a one pressure point and then a mimic. That way he only goes to negative three BP, which is easier to recover from. We're gonna white wind, which will heal everyone up. We're gonna curse, so if he does decide to do any of his attacks, it won't hurt us too much. We get everyone back up to full BP. <laughs> we rage, deal some decent damage here. It, unfortunately, we can't choose our target, but the, the fact that we can still do this is pretty crazy. Look at that, man. Very loud ability, actually, I just realized. It's a very, very loud ability. Yeah, this is kind of the gameplay loop with this, though. Battle Thirst, okay, so we know that he's about to do... Um, his attack, which is okay. Because all we all we have to do is just immediately stillness. <laughs> and then we can just cast Enigma again if we want to re-up our ability. And then we just use Agnes to uh, re-up this. Stillness. And then we just cast Enigma for the next few turns, and then we just spam poison to get everyone's BP back up. Yeah, so this strategy is pretty overpowered, I'm gonna be frank here. Um, obviously, it isn't as overpowered as a steal in this taste in the world strategy because it does require someone to constantly be re-upping BP, but just the fact that you can do this is pretty insane. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just re-up our curse on the boys. Um, actually, you know what? We're gonna use Ring of BP, uh, BP a little bit more. We're gonna re up Curse, of course. And then I'm also going to use Spiritism to give Fairy's aid to Idea. And then we're gonna go ahead and. I don't know. We'll use Agnes' BP for something else. Let's go ahead and just have her. Uh, let's have her haste everyone. Um, we can go ahead and have her. Uh, cast Protect, I guess, to boost everyone's physical defense if need be. And then we'll have Tiz default because we're still in stillness. Um, they took a lot of damage um, from this. So look at how many buffs Idea specifically has. Look at that, dude. That's insane. Okay, he's going for Battle Thirst again. I'm feeling pretty greedy myself, actually. So I might just go ahead and try to finish this fight off fairly soon. Um, uh, I'll have Ring about default, actually. We'll have Agnes re-up our uh, funny little strategy here, though, as we have to redo the menu because I can't just auto it um, because she recently defaulted as the auto, so I have to redo this menu. And then we'll have Tiz go ahead and... Eh, I don't want him to default. N yeah, uh, nah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Because De Rosa, uh, Lord De Rosa currently has a curse on him, I don't think 
energy blast is actually going to hurt all that much. And besides, I might outspeed him enough where I just kill him outright. Oh, I cast sleep. Oh, darn it. I cast sleep. Okay, uh, that's another thing. Make sure you're paying attention. That's commentator's curse right there. I was talking and not paying attention to what I was pushing the buttons. That is unfortunate. Um, but it'll work out. Uh, we'll just go ahead and rage twice anyways. I, I, I don't think I'm in any real danger here. I lost out on my, my buffs, so I'll have to try to re uh, regain them from spamming this ability. But hopefully, maybe at least Victor can go down. All right, cool, we got Victor down. And maybe the Rosso goes down too? Nope, Gravaga, that's okay. Battle Thirst again. We're gonna go ahead and just, hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll brave. We'll just go ahead and White Wind and then immediately Stillness. And then we'll have Agnes not cast Sleep this time. Poison. Okay, I am casting the Poison spell. That is good. I, I want to cast the Poison spell, not the Sleep spell. <laughs> oh my goodness. Asuna will get rid of Sleep, though, which is really nice. The Poison, get everyone's BP back up. And then... That wasn't the greatest run, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and re-up Drain as we have kind of a dead turn here. We're going to White Wind and also Curse this turn. Get DeRozo back onto the negative with his stats. Have on yes. Uh, do I really need to use her, her ability? Nah, not really. Uh, let's brave a few times. Let's get a, a haste back up here. Oh, not a sloga. Haste. There we go. And then, why not? We'll get a protect up. And then Tiz defaults because he can't do anything, but it's okay. We'll protect. White Wind, heal everyone up, get the spell going. Not the spell, uh, the uh, the curse. Bone Crush does nothing to us, even if it, even if uh, Stillness wasn't up. We do two rages, call it there for Idea. Um, let's go ahead and Fairies aid Idea, and then actually we're probably good there. And then we'll have Agnes do her little funny strategy. My, this is my least favorite part about the strategy, is having to go back and just menu through all of this. Did Okay, I'll, I'll need to make sure and, and check that I cast the right spell. I'm going to mimic here, and then I'm going to pull up the thing here. Okay, poison, 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 Asuna. All right, we, we did the right thing this time. Let's go. Get our BP back up. Nice. And then we just start pamming. So, okay, cool. It, Deroso was already almost dead. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Soul of the Masa. Um, crystal Vest, a Mega Elixir, and a Crystal Mail for our problems. All right, cool. I am a man of my word. Behold, the final painting. What's wrong, Victor? You seem uninterested in viewing the next painting. But so be it. Here is what you sought. I doubt there has ever been a man who sought the secret of life so doggedly, while so dogged by despair. Consider this my gift to a man ever on the edge of hopelessness, whiling away his years in fruitless study. From a man no less hopeless, victim to an eternity of years fruitlessly whiled away. I am eternally grateful, my lord. The nature of my immortality is, for lack of a better word, a cult. I know not what secrets your modern medicine can tease from this lock of hair, but you are welcome to try. Ah, one further thing. Should my gift prove the seed for some new life, I would ask you name the child Lilia. Lilia, my lord? Lilia de Rosso. It was my mother's name. May your work prove fruitful, Victor. Now, will the rest of you join me at the final painting? But the question becomes, does Victor in this world save Victoria from her ailment? Who knows? I grow weary, I bid you leave me in pace. Okay, well, let's go ahead and humor Lord of the Rosso. Maybe there's something new about this painting. Lord De Rosso's angel painting. It's as he said. She looks just like Agnes. You can say that again. 
Yes, they could be twins. Is there really such a resemblance? Did I speak thus in the previous world? Yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing new here. Which is, again, very unfortunate, but that's how it is. So, that's a really interesting sub-scenario, though. Victor comes to Lord De Rosso in hopes of finding the secrets of immortality, and who knows? Maybe he found it. We don't really ever get to know the answer, but I like to think that at least in this world, where Victoria isn't a insane psychopath and instead just kind of hangs out with people she finds cool, maybe she does get the peace and happiness she get uh, she deserves, and at well, least Victor believes that she deserves. Who knows? Um, I, I, I I'm willing to believe so. So I'm back here in Eternia for a brief moment as I'm going to heal up. Because my MP is looking, and eh, it's not worse for wear, but it could be better. Thankfully, Ring of Bell doesn't spend a lot of MP because he's using his BP to cast magic. We're going to save up, and we're going to go ahead and tackle the final sub-scenario here, which is actually in Central Command. It is the second sub-scenario in Central Command. And if you've been keeping track of, of who we've fought and who we haven't, then the bosses of this next encounter are pretty obvious. Um, so I will see you at the top of Central Command. And here we are. I'm going to be keeping with the same build as Vissel, the, uh, especially the ability Enigma and whatnot, will be getting a little bit more use out of this encounter than it did with Victor and Lord De Rosso. So let's go ahead and hop up to the 50th floor. You came, and came a woman grown. You look nothing like the child I sent off to Keltisla. Father? You've flown far since leaving my sight, guided by beliefs that are entirely your own. Proud is the father who sees his daughter grow so. And yet, no, the time for such words is past. And there is one other who has disobeyed my orders. Show yourself, Alternus. Lord Marshal. You insist on defending me despite my wishes. Are you my son, or a thorn in my side? Your Lordship, you... You would call me your son? You've need to ask, after all these years. Help the boy, Adia. That's right. After all these years. I not thought such simple words could bring such joy. Thank you. Now, let us begin. My sacred sword, Alternus's Blade of Darkness. The contrast between black and white complements each other too well, my dear daughter. Yes, of course, we have Brave the Templar and Dark Knight Alternus Dim to take down. So pairing these two together is actually surprisingly a good combination. Uh, Alternus has a lot of AoE based attacks with Black, Blaine, Black Bane, which he can uh, hit you hit everyone uh, multiple times at once. Um, of course, he's a little BP hungry, and he uses his, his own HP in order to do so, but it, that can be complemented by Brave's ability to constantly default and pressure you with hard-hitting single-target attacks. So, you've got to kind of strike a decent balance here, as both of these individuals have very strong physical attacks and very strong magical attacks. Honestly, we will be completely mitigating one of those, being the magic, thanks to Enigma. The physical attacks, though, we'll have to worry about at a later at a later juncture, as we have to wait a little bit for Ring of Bell to finally get into his uh, curse spamming. So for right now, though, we're going to just go with the same strategy I did at the very, very beginning of the previous encounter. We're going to immediately Enigma to remove that threat of magical damage. We're going to... Set up our spells now. Hopefully, I can cast poison. There's poison. All right, we're casting poison. We're we're in the clear. Um, I'm so glad that we actually get to fight these two specifically as a group, as these are two of my favorite characters in the game, 
that have really interesting synergy and I, honestly, any time to fight Alternus Dim is a treat for me because I really like his character. Um, Brave is probably not the best character to try and deal damage to right now, as he braves con as he defaults constantly. So we're actually going to hit Alternus with our ability, and ideally, he doesn't immediately minus strike and kill anyone. As minus strike will go through everything except for Stillness, as it's HP based instead of um, an attack based. Black Bane will not do completely will do completely nothing to us because we are guarded against every single element which is really, really nice. So we can begin raging ourselves. Now you might be wondering, will rage affect Alternus because he's also a Dark Knight? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? Uh, let's go ahead and have Ring a Bell set up some... Actually, we'll have him fully brave. We'll go ahead and have him curse both bosses. Then we'll have him White Wind to heal himself up. And then we're also going to have him cast Fairy's Aid on Idea to increase her dark damage. We'll have... Agnes, go ahead and uh, redo her magic, so that way I can also menu Tiz. Because unfortunately, if I auto right now, it will set Tiz to just one pressure point, and I want him to do multiple. So I have to redo Agnes's actions, and then set Tiz's actions. That's one thing that, like, if you're... That's one good thing about, like, turn order, is that I could technically do Agnes last... I could put Agnes last on the turn order, so I don't have to redo her action. But I'm not doing that right now. We're going to speed things up, we're going to curse everyone, we're going to heal up, and then we're going to give Idea uh, maximum damage with dark damage. Pressure Point's going to do some pretty solid damage itself. We're going to set up some poison, and then hopefully we can get through this fairly quickly. Black Blaine's going to do nothing to us. Okay, yeah, uh, Alternus doesn't take too much damage from it. You seem to be enjoying yourselves. Master? No, but sooner. It's been too long. Forgive my intrusion upon the family reunion. Might I join in the fun, Brave? <laughs> as you like. Your family as much as any other. You honor me. Well, Adia, may I? Yes, please, Master. <laughs> Swordmaster Kami Isumi stands before you. This is easily one of my favorite fights in the game, because we get to fight these three legends. Oh my goodness, best family reunion ever. We get to awesome spar against Kamizumi, Brave, and Alternus. What a fight, man. So, adding Kamizumi to the mix is interesting, as he will be fishing for counters. Um, honestly, the best bet is for you either to apply stillness and then trigger one of his counters, which is probably what I'm gonna do, or just take down one of the other bosses, which will force him to brave constantly. Either strategy really works, but I'm gonna be trying to force him to uh, counter normally. But right now we're going to re-up Enigma. Actually, can I, can I do both of these? Yeah, let's try. Let me see if I can do Enigma and then also Stillness. Yeah, I can do Enigma and Stillness, cool. We're going to redo our little buff here, as I'm actually going to make Tiz default. So I have to redo her magic. Don't cast sleep. Do not do that. That's a bad idea. Really, really bad idea. We're going to have Tiz default for right now. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Brave is going on the offense, so we might have to worry about... Actually, no. We, we have cast Stillness already, so we don't even need to worry about physical damage. Perfect. Uh, BP is not looking great. Radiant Blast is going to do nothing. Heart Strike is going to do nothing. Okay, Kamizumi is not going for a counter, but that's okay. So now we're going to fish for a counter. I'm actually going to have one of my characters cast magic and one of them cast a physical attack. We'll have Idia go ahead and re-up her drain real quick. We're going to have Ring a Bell give every single enemy on the field. We're going to re-up the curse on Brave and Alternus, and we're going to give Kamizumi a curse as well. We're going to have Anyas cast a, an attack spell just on Kamizumi. Just in case things do work out, we'll just cast it on everyone. And then we'll have Tiz attack Kamizumi. That way we, sh we can trigger his counter unless he decides to do uh, know that enemy, which he did not. He didn't before Swan. So we will be triggering his counter, which is excellent. Excellent, 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 excellent. We're going to speed through these things right here. Uh, before Swine should trigger the counter. Nope, it didn't. Ah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I guess it's... No, it's not. Uh, that's weird. Anyway, uh... Okay, well, maybe we can... 
Hopefully, okay, Stolas is gone, which means we need to play this fairly safe. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, ignore my uh, just uh, query right there. We're going to go ahead and go on the offense with Adia. We're going to have Ringabelle cast Fairy Zade on Adia to give her her buffs. We're going to re-up uh, our poison BP. That way I can send Tiz on the offense without needing to worry about his BP later down the road. And hopefully one of these guys goes down fairly quickly. We're going to be trying to take down Alternus as... He has... he's fairly weak, and I see him as less of a threat. Um, so I'm going to be taking him down as soon as possible, as he's not that hard to take down. Pressure point on an alternus. Ideally, he can go down here fairly quickly. Nope. Okay. Maybe right here? Ah, damn it. No! Minus strike! Okay, yeah, so that's a minus strike. That's actually, I think, our first time really seeing that on screen. Um, unfortunately, minus strike goes through everything, and he's faster than us because we haven't cast haste. So, we have to worry about that now. Um, honestly, it's not that difficult. We're just going to immediately cast Stillness. And then we'll just cast Raise on Idia. Because I'll have the Stillness turn. So we can... Oh, okay. Now that someone has gone down, though, Kamizumi is going to be going into the negative. So we can uh, take advantage of that later. Uh, so we have one full turn of being able to do anything we want. Now Alternus is going to be spamming Minus Strike because he's um, at that point. He's at the point where he has basically nothing else to lose. He doesn't want to use any of his HP to do Black Bane because he doesn't have any HP left. <laughs> so he's going to be doing that. Uh, we're going to re-up Enigma with on uh, with a uh, Ring of Bell. We're going to be casting our stuff with Anyas. I think what I'm going to try and do is wrong thing. Um, I think what I might try to do is... Actually, no. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with the BP stuff. Because I might be able to get Idea to act faster next turn. Actually, I'll just have Tiz give her a... Uh, do I want to give her... No, I just want to give her like, an X potion or something. There we go. This will give me more BP, thankfully. Enigma. X potion. Minus Strike does nothing because we're still in the middle of our stillness. I'm then going to Rage. Now, hopefully, I'm, I'm just going to get uh, White Wind out of the way. And then... Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to Brave once, White Wind, and then we're also going to Fairy Zade Idea. And then I'm going to have Agnes cast Cura on everyone. Actually, no. I'm gonna have her cast re-raise on everyone. And then I'm also then I'm going to redo the poison stuff. That way, if Adia still goes down. Actually, you know what? Why am I doing that? I'll just cast haste. That way her speed is faster. Uh poison on everyone. And then we give everyone Asuna. I love Red Mage, man. Being able to do this on just one job is insane. And then Tiz will just do pressure point on Alternus. Ideally, we can get this down no problemo there we go pressure points there he goes all right he's down maybe this will be sent to kamizumi perfect because he's currently in the negative he cannot fight back there we go we have haste now get our bp back up to a decent amount heart strike that's okay idia lives because she's that crazy she's got that defense up uh she's just gonna throw these attacks randomly which is unfortunate but we'll still be doing some decent damage look at that um, unfortunately, we will need to... Do we need to re-up our Enigma? We do not. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just brave a little bit more. And we're just gonna curse the two bosses that we have left. We have the we have the two father figures of Adia still standing. We're going to go ahead and just cast our poison strategy just normally this time around. Where we give everyone as much BP as humanly possible. And Tiz is just going to go straight back into the pressure points. Uh, we'll send it on to Kamizumi. I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, Kamizumi, uh, pressure point spamming. Yeah, he's going to be going in the offense anyways. So we lower his defense, his physical attack as much as possible. And we just try to beat him down before he can beat us down. Pressure point spamming should be enough. Yep, yeah, awesome. And then this ignores physical defense. So unfortunately, because Brave is defaulting 
His defense is insanely high, but now maybe? Yeah, he's on 2 BP. He's definitely going to attack this turn. So we'll rage. We'll, um... Brave once. We'll cast Enigma just to re-up its ability, and then we'll cast Fairy's Aid. And we'll just uh, auto for Agnes. Just to get that up. Uh, get Ring of Bell's BP back up there. And then Rage should be enough to finish off. There we go. That fight's pretty fun. Um, if you're not hyper-cheesing it with BP bat batteries like I just was, it can be a little difficult. It's more of a puzzle than anything. You've got to work around Kamiyazumi's counters, so you either need to finish off the other two bosses first, or trigger his um, counters by either attacking him or by killing off one of your teammates to make him brave constantly so he becomes less of a threat as he'll be in the negative for more, uh, more turns than he normally would be. It's just all about trying to figure out who you think you should prioritize, take them out, and then it's honestly smooth sailing from there. We got Crystal Helm, Masamune, Genji Armor, Genji Helm, Genji Gloves, and an Excalibur. And a crystal mail. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would expect no less from my daughter. I'm your and mother's daughter, Alternus's family, and Master Kami Izumi's disciple. A sister disciple to Einheria and comrade of the Wind Vestal. I've learned so much from so many people. Their lessons have brought me so far. We've disagreed at times, even fought. But all those conflicting views are a part of me. They make me who I am. That's why... No. You need say no more. Walk upon your own path, child. Do that, and you shall. You'll find the way. I will, Father. I promise. Lady Vestal, tis and ring a bell. My son from another world. I place my daughter and the fate of our world in your hands. You can count on us. Huh? Where have Master Kami Izumi and Alternus gone? Swordmaster! Where are you going? The way of the sword runs far and deep, as do the journeys on which it takes me. Please wait. I have a favor to ask of you. Will you hear it? A favor? From you? Seeing your fearsome skill firsthand has shown me just how much I've yet to learn. Should an assassin of your caliber ever strike at the Lord Marshal, I would be powerless. I desire the strength to defend his lordship from any who would bring him harm. Please, Master Kami Izumi, remain here in this land. Show me the way of the sword, as only you can teach it. You're stronger than you think. A man defending what he holds dear is far more formidable than one who seeks to take it. You already have the strength you seek. If I came upon Brave with sword drawn, it would be a fierce fight with you at his side. Master. A sword to defend, not to take. Never, ever forget that. If you'll excuse me. Farewell. Thank you, Swordmaster. Your words will be forever etched in my mind. Family does truly matter. And thus, the sub-scenarios here in Chapter 7 are done. But, of course, we aren't done just yet here. Let's go back to Eternia and regroup. I've talked about my love for the Council of Six members and Nobutsu and Akami Izumi especially, but it's just really nice to see the Lee family, Alternus, and Kami Izumi really get along as a true family. It's it's nice to see, especially since, especially in the early game, we heard a lot about how Idia values her family, 
and how much she loved her home, and to see it in a new light was something that she was horrified by. At least in one world, Idia can truly say that these people are as virtuous and as heroic as they claim to be. Chapter 7 introduces us to a world where the Eternians aren't as threatening, I guess is the best word to play. I mean, obviously there are still the bad apples that are in bad apples on every world with De Rosa, Kata, and Provateur. But the Eternians don't seem to be as evil. Now, for what reason or another that might be, we don't know. We don't know the fates of Idea or Agnes in this world. We don't know if they're dead or alive or if they're off doing something else. Tiz, we know, is dead. But Ring a Bell, obviously, we also know his fate. So, next time on Bravely Default, we are going to be awakening all of the crystals and creating the Holy Pillar and entering inside of it. But also, we're going to be doing another small little job grinding session. I have a few things that I want to grab on a few characters before we head into our next world. It's not, it's not going to be anything like the chapter 6 session that I had, but there will be a there will be like maybe one job mastery for each new char for each character and a few level ups here and there. Nothing too crazy. The main attraction next episode will definitely be the crystals. And we'll be awakening all of them. So, with that said, I'll see you soon.